All right, so we're getting the hang of writing the root locus. And I asked Valerie to write me a problem so that I could solve it. So Valerie's written it up on the board. And so here is our next problem. We're going to do g times h is equal to 1 over s cubed. Okay? So we'll try to apply as much as we can right away, and we'll see what happens. So we see that if we draw our system, our s plane, real and imaginary here, we can find the roots and the poles of our open loop system. So if we write down our poles, we'll actually see that there's no poles, right? So, sorry, not poles, Ugh, no zeros. There's no zeros here. So our zeros, if we wrote this out, zeros, none, zero. And the poles, we have three poles, so poles, at zero, zero, and zero. Okay, so it's kind of hard to represent that on this plane, but a lot of times people try to make x's that kind of look like they're over each other here, so we'll just say triple pole at zero. Okay, so, well, we're not quite sure what to do with this because there's no zeros, but let's see how we can apply the rest. So we're going to have three branches, so we have three poles here. We should have three branches. We know that they're going to start at the pole, so all three will start at this pole at zero. And it has to be symmetric about the axis. So whatever path it takes it has to be symmetric. And let's see if we can apply this. On the real axis, the root locus exists to the left, this should be sorry, S, exists to the left of the open loop poles. This is O. Open loop poles at zeros. So here we have one, two, three. That's an odd number. So we will have the root locus actually on this side. So we will have something going here. And the question is, where does it stop? So I'm going to answer this question now. This is actually one of our, that was very smart. She gave us a tricky problem. Um, the zeros here, there aren't any zeros. So instead of having a finite value, we actually have infinite zeros. So here, we have three infinite zeros. So three infinite, I'll just put infinity, infinite zeros. So that means that they go off into infinity and they will just kind of continue off. So there's no discrete or yeah, finite ending point. They are, the ending point is just continuing off into infinity. So here we actually see that. We see one of them. So one of these three poles will follow this path and go all the way to infinity. Okay? So there's a few more rules that I didn't, this the last part of this is that for, you can have infinite zeros. And here we're working again with proper systems. So the order in the denominators higher or equal to that of the numerator. So usually our infinite parts will be zero and all the systems will work in, the infinite, um, the infinite ones will be the, the zeros of the system. So our poles will go off into infinity. They'll start somewhere and go off into infinity. Okay. So there's two other things, and I'm not actually going to derive all the math for this. There's some references in the book if you want to look up how to actually derive all this thing, all these things. But I'll just write down what we've learned from other people doing math before us. So let's see. So for the for the root locus, for infinite, infinite, um, I guess they're zeros. They're the poles as they go to infinity. I'm going to write it this way. So, for the root locus, as the root locus, I'm just going to write it as RL, approaches, approaches straight lines. as asymptotes. As the root locus approaches infinity. Okay? So we have our infinite zero and 
as the root locus goes towards that, it will actually go towards a straight line. And these lines are defined by certain values. So we have two values. One will be, we call this omega, and this is the point on the real axis where it will, where that, that asymptotic line begins. And that is defined by the sum of the finite poles minus the sum of the finite, oops, finite zeros. And these are all of our open loop, which is our GH expression here, whatever the K is multiplied by. And then this is divided by the number of finite poles, poles minus the number of finite zeros. So this is the point where the, the asymptotes will start from the real axis. And then they'll also start from the real axis and go out at some angle. So here actually we have this, we're starting from this point and we're going off into negative 180 or positive 180 into the left side. And then we will see that they'll actually go off to two other directions, but what are the angles of those? So we also have a definition for the angle of that split off, so we're going to call it theta, and the numer denominator is actually the same as this one, so let's write it again, number of finite poles minus the number of finite zeros. Okay, and then the numerator, it's actually a fixed expression, it's 2k plus 1 times pi. Okay, and then where k is equal to 0, plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2. And so because these are the angles, they're going to go all around, um, go around this. And it turns out they'll, they'll start repeating after a certain point. So because we, only, we can only have three paths here, so we have three poles, we need three infinite zeros, so we'll get three different angles. All right, so let's, this is a little bit confusing. This is just kind of something you would write down and memorize. Let's try to apply it to this and see what we get. Okay, so first of all, here we have three finite poles and zero finite zeros. So the expression at the bottom here, so we'll write it here. We're gonna calculate this first, our, our ome not omega, sigma here. So the number of finite poles is three. The number of finite zeros, zero. So we just get a 3 in the denominator. Now we want to sum up the finite poles. So each of the poles is at 0. This one's easy. 0 plus 0 plus 0 is 0. And then we minus the finite zeros. They don't exist, so we don't even have to do that part. So we get simply 0, which makes sense because we're starting this case, it's a very simplified example. The, all of the poles are starting at zero, so it makes sense that we're going to start from there and go out somewhere. Okay, so now let's look at where the angles go from. So our points are all going to start from here. Makes sense. Now let's look at the angle that they will travel at. Let's do theta here. Whatever you found in the denominator here is going to be the same for here. So because the number of finite poles, three, minus the number of finite zeros, zero of them, so we get three. And here we have this, this set expression. So two, two times k plus one, all of that multiplied by pi. So you kind of have to put in each one because it makes more sense to do it. So let's start with zero. If we put in zero for k, we get one times pi, which is just pi, divided by three. And that is this angle, so it's going to be approximately going up at this angle, okay? So pi divided by three, you can calculate that. And then if we put in, so we're actually gonna put in a positive one for k here. So if you put two plus one is three times pi. So three, three pi divided by three. So three pi divided by three is just going to be pi. 
okay? So that is actually already what we have here. Our pi is this one, right, 180, going this way. So then we put in one more. If we put in a negative, a negative one here, we're gonna get negative two plus one. So a negative one is gonna be negative pi over three. So that's our other angle. And if we think about what that is, that is simply the reciprocal of this, right? And it makes sense because we know that our root locus here has to be reflected across the top, across the real axis. So the top half has to be the same reflected as the bottom half. So we'll get, I'm gonna erase this triple pole label here. We're gonna get an asymptote going off into this direction. Okay, so, and once you do this for a number of different poles, it's always gonna be the same, so once you kind of memorize what they are, it will make sense, but here you can calculate them. And so we've calculated all the three different asymptotes, and we'll see that, so each of these poles will go off, one will go in this direction, one of the poles will go off in this direction, and one of the poles will go off in this direction. My video got cut off again, which means I'm making my videos too long. Uh, but just to recap what we just did. So for this example of 1 over s cubed, we were able to, we know that because we have zeros that go off into infinity, because they're not defined based on our open loop system, they're not finite, they're infinite, they go off into infinity, we can use these, the values of the pole, which in this case happen to be all zero, but otherwise they might be other values. You can use these equations, first of all, to find the point that the asymptotes will leave the real axis. So this point is um, theta. They're all kind of zero, so it's a little bit hard. Um, not theta, sorry, sigma. And you can find that by looking at the, taking the sum of the finite poles, in this case they're all zero, subtracting by the values of the finite zeros, and then, um, or the sum of them all, and then you divide them by the number of finite poles minus the number of finite zeros, which makes sense because it's the number of, here, the number of axes that will, you need to define how many of your poles actually go off into infinity. And then you can use this equation, and if you don't like pi, this is the same as 180 degrees, right? So you can just do the same thing. You'll get this, the same thing. Here you'll get 60, 180, and negative 60, so it's the same thing. And you can use these equations to find the asymptotes. First, once you draw the asymptotes, you know that one of the poles, the branches, will start from the open loop poles and go follow that asymptote, go towards it into infinity. Okay, so this are all the different steps. We've gone through each part of them. Hopefully, I've explained them fairly clearly. Um, it is a little bit confusing, but if you just play with the systems and do examples, I think you'll get a, a hang of it. So if you follow these different rules in order to draw the root locus, you can sketch it fairly easily. And then from there, if you want a very precise one, I recommend using MATLAB. Um, there are some calculations that you can find the actual breakout point um, and we may fall, cover those as well, but for now this is how you roughly sketch the root locus based on equation given here and following these rules.